Bonnie, the theater lady, is back on Bergvivant. I'm back again. And fresh. Woo! <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What is? Surprise! Yeah, yeah this you didn't is know a that was coming. No, what is this? That is Napoleon. The main character now, I knew in no Orwell's classic Animal Farm, which I saw today at Prime Stage, and it was Humane Society Day, and if you donated, you got a finger puppet, so now, I picked this one, I, I know, <laughs> and I surprised you. I know Napoleon was short, but uh, that's, that's... No, not this one. Napoleon. No. He was the leader of the animals after they revolted in this George Orwell classic. Yes, of course, farm. this is the well-read classic with the talking pig in which the endearing spider writes messages in the web. No, no, Lindsay. that's E.B. White Charlotte Webb. Get with it. Um, well, there, there's a talking pig and the, the farmer says that'll do. You are so mixed up. No, this is a George Orwell classic, <laughs> 1945 novella, Animal Farm. Hmm. However... When I knew that I was going to see this today, I kept thinking, wow, I read that book in high school and I really didn't like it. Wow. <laughs> that is However, a classic. It is a classic. However, this adaptation mm. by the playwright was unbelievable. Uh, it was so good. And I can't believe I met this wonderful playwright today, Andrew Periel. Mm. He was there. Mm. And this show first showed in Philadelphia in around 2008 and it's shown all around the country but this is a premiere for our area oh, really? and he explained to me that this was adapted after the post 9-11 kind of thing when mm -hmm. we were losing all our privacy rights and and so he has written this adaptation that truly gave a, a fresh energy and invigorated the actual classic. It, I wish I could have seen this play when I was in high school instead of having to read the book. Ah. Because it, it told the whole story. You didn't miss a thing. But it was so engaging and so interesting. Um, it opened with the pigs, well, all the animals actually, deciding to overthrow and revolt against Farmer Jones, their owner, because he was not a nice man. We won't go into the details, but he was a drunkard and didn't treat his animals very well. Oh, so that is terrible. It is terrible. <laughs> and they... <laughs> I love this little thing. So they decided to form their own society and run a, a kind of a utopia, but as you know, it, it didn't go well. Everybody you know, knows the plot. Maybe, maybe Congress it. should consider this. You know, I think we might be better off with farm animals. Well, that's the problem. They <laughs> took on human characteristics, and as um, the play evolved, they weren't any better. So and they weren't any better off. So they, that's the whole. That's the, the premise. Whole thing that's of, the right. Could you call that a moral? I don't know, because no, you don't want to, you know, take that away. But that is no. The but I guess the the greed and the desire for power and having to lord over somebody else and have the superior and mm. the less inferior so i won't really go too much into the plot because i think everybody knows it. and if you don't go see this play and you'll learn it right anyway. and, and about the spider that writes the messages <laughs> in the web which we all know you better stop that napoleon's <laughs> word that's not goes. that's not animal farm <laughs> no that's but there's there's a, there's a farm and there are animals to be yeah fair. but no Thank spiders you. Right. no messages in um. all right so anyway, this play was directed by Melissa Hill Grand, and she did a wonderful job directing it because there were eight cast members. Much of the time, they were all on the stage together, and when they were on the stage, there was movement. There was um, dancing. There was shifting really? in places. The blocking on this was amazing. Choreography. It, it, well, yeah, a little bit. It wasn't like a dance number or dance scenes, but... They were moving. They were always moving. And um, there was some music. There was a dulcimer and a banjo mm -hmm. and a guitar and a couple songs. And their voices were lovely. And it was a really strong cast. I cannot even really say there were total standouts only because everybody was so good in their role. And the, many of them played several different roles. Mm. And it was really neat because i thought maybe they'd be in animal costumes but they were not not at all oh 
they were humans, but they had all these animal characteristics, which made it really interesting. Like the the two girls that were the horses, uh, Chelsea Bartell and Natalie Spanner, kind of pranced, you know, when they moved and when they talked, they before they talked. And I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and the the raven was. Caw, caw, and you come over here. You know, it was just really oh, neat the way they did get, it with their how, voices. How did you get passed over for casting in this? That was brilliant. Oh, I didn't audition otherwise. No, Poof. no really, this was a wonderful cast. Mm. Um, Stefan Lingenfelter was Napoleon, the the leader. The, this and it was fun to watch him because he was enthusiastic in the beginning and all on the side of the animals and all for animalism, and then you watched him transform into this kind of selfish, self-centered, mm. stingy person, well, pig, not person, who <laughs> uh, was unfair to the others who had elected him. Then John Mishnah was Boxer, really a strong character, hard worker, and he played that so well. He, I really enjoyed Played what? The, boxer. Oh, what, what is Boxer? Is he a... He was an animal. Well, what kind of animal? Uh, he was a horse. Oh, okay. Thank and, you. That's and, what yeah. But I don't want to tell you what happened to him in case people don't know the plot. Oh. But it was kind of sad. And Ryan Borgo... He won the Triple Crown. <laughs> Not quite. Let's just say that. <laughs> Ryan Borgo was the cat. And the cat comes and goes in this sh show just as, as he cats did in the do. Book. Yes. But he also played some other characters. But I loved it. He had his hair up like little cat ears on either oh. side. Oh, and I talked to him after the show and he said, we were going for the Wolverine look. <laughs> and he almost achieved it. But he was a real quirky, cool character actor. And Josh Bresford, Ref I'm sorry, I didn't say that right. Ralsford, Josh Ralsford, mm -hmm. also gave a wonderful performance as did Joseph David Rittenhouse and Bill Smarter. And I didn't, oh, Bill Smolder, I'm sorry. The set was amazing. It was all an old dilapidated barn. Um, I can't say enough about it. It was a, a show that I didn't know what to expect because Animal Farm is not my favorite story, but I was totally entertained throughout the entire show. All animals are created equal, except some are more equal than others. And no animal shall kill another animal was the original amendment that they were living by. And then it was, no animal shall kill another animal without just cause. You gonna run for public office on this platform? I th now, I hate to break this to you, but I think that's a cat. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I, I thought it was a pink because it was pink. Well, it is pink. I'll give you that. Were you compelled to eat less pork after seeing this production? Actually, Napoleon turned out to be such a stinker and the pigs were such elitists. I'm going to eat more bacon. Bow wow wow yippee yo yippee yay Because bow, I like wow, George yippee, Clinton's yippee, song yippee, yay. Atomic Doll <laughs> That'll do pig That'll do